What is up, party people? My name is Daryl, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how you can fix your broken website using the page builder of Elementor, Divi, and Breezy. I'm also gonna be giving you a review about WordPress 5.0 and what I personally think about it. And I'm also gonna be talking about the state of the word speech that was given by Matt Wollenwig and just give you my two cents and give you my opinion about it. So first off, let's talk about Breezy. So first, if you are using the Breezy page builder, and um, you know, it's funny, a lot of people actually reached out in Facebook groups and I kind of found this out the hard way. <laughs> and it turns out you have to enable the classic editor in order to get your pages with the Brizzy back. So over here on the dashboard, if you go over to plugins and go to add new, now assuming you update your plugin, okay? So first do that. Now right here is the classic editor plugin. You'll need to go ahead and install and activate this plugin right here. So you can see I have Brizzy, Brizzy Pro, Classic Editor. Now another thing that if something's not working for your page builders, guys, just disable all your plugins and kind of go one by one to find out which one's not working or which one can have a conflict with your website. I know it is a total pain in the butt when you're disabling plugins because it can make your site, it can kind of ruin your website in a lot of aspects. Trust me, I've been there. But um, I would just suggest that uh, go ahead and start deactivating your plugins and kind of see which one might be the culprit, which one might be the uh, one causing problems. And then after that, you can kind of contact the developers and see what you can do from there. So right here, I've installed the classic editor. Now, if I go to all pages right here, so here are the pages I have. And now right here, you see how it says edit with Brizzy, but on these pages, I still don't have it. So any page that I've made prior previously, I still don't have it. Now, if you click on edit right here, you're gonna see that the edit with Brizzy is now there. So you have to update the plugins all the way, make sure it's at the fullest version, then install the classic editor. Now, even when I deactivated this plugin, the actual edit with Brizzy still showed up. And I think that might be saved on the, the MySQL or something, cause I don't know uh, why it's still there. Cause I updated it and it wasn't there, but I added the plugin and then it was there. So uh, right here, I'll just do, um, uh, we'll, we'll just edit this page. And now you can see the edit with Brizzy is still right there. And if I click on it, it should allow me to edit the page with Brizzy. So this is the Brizzy Builder and there you go. All right, so congratulations. So remember guys, install the classic editor if you're having problems, okay? So that can be a, uh, a big way on how you can find the problem. Also disable all the plugins and make sure everything is updated. Next, let's talk about the Elementor. Now for some strange reason, I got it to work. So basically what I did, I think it was a theme conflict with Elementor, because what I did was I actually reset the entire website, I deleted all my plugins, and I used a basic theme, and after that happened, the Elementor canvas did work. So if you are having issues with Elementor, it has to be due to either a theme issue that's not compatible with 5.0, or possibly a plugin. So make sure you look at the themes, though. A lot of the theme developers, especially some of them on Envato, might not have updated for Gutenberg because they thought it won't, you know, it won't have a big effect. It turns out it really does. So you need to make sure that you have, you know, uh, the plugins disabled, the ones that the ones that are uh, causing a problem, and then also switch your theme out. Maybe that is the reason why. I know that can be a real tedious task, but I'm just giving you uh, my two cents on how you can fix this stuff. Because now when I go to all pages over here and go to new, and I go to Elementor Canvas, now it's working. So I've seen a lot of people in the comments saying that their site was destroyed and I'm almost I'm almost certain and I almost guarantee you it has to be due to a theme compatibility issue plugin or I'm sorry a theme compatibility problem or a plugin and there you go so now it's working all right and I'll talk about Divi now if Divi is acting funny again remember you need to update now this is where I made the mistake now if you go to appearance right here and go to themes the problem is that sometimes Divi does not show the most updated version if you go to dashboard right here and click on updates way up there, then you will see the DV uh, theme update appear there sometimes. So I made the mistake of going over here to themes and I, I know some of you might use Divi and sometimes the update won't even display. So you don't even know if there's an update or not and that was my situation. Now what you can also do is go to the um, the theme options right there and they've actually added now the um, the classic editor as a little button that you can click. So I think it's right here under builder uh, builder, advanced, and, and enable classic editor. So that can also be a way on how you can get your back end back if you decide to use only the back end and you don't want to use the front end. So over here, I'll go to uh, add new pages. And then you can see we have the classic editor now installed. Oh, oh I, I missed this screen. You know, I really do. Uh, the main, and you know, also Elegant Themes has really done a good job with that builder. It's faster. I, I and, and usually they always say, oh, it's faster and it's not, but this time it really is faster and it's it's much more improved. I mean, congrats, you know? So the main demo, and then right here, I'll use the Davy Builder. 
Oh, wow. Okay, there we go. There we go. We got the back end. Okay, I thought I was going to the front end, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So there we go. Now we have the back end builder right here. So you can kind of mess around with this, and then you can also click on build on the front end, and that will take you to the front end as well. So that is a fix for Divi. And again, make sure you know um, swap out themes. You know, try to really uh, mess around with stuff because Divi, Elementor, and Brizzy are compatible with Gutenberg. You just have to kind of find out wh who's the culprit, who, which one's which one's the bad one. You know. So uh, that's my personal uh, fix for those builders. So if that has helped you, make sure to like this video. I, I hope it has because I saw a lot of people in the comments saying they had a lot of problems with 5.0. Now I'm gonna be talking about the state of the word and what I personally feel about the version 5.0. Now 5.0 was a release that was kind of pushed against developers against the will of a lot of people. You know, when when uh, Matt Mullen when he first introduced 5.0, nobody wanted it. In fact, nobody out there wanted it. I mean. W, WPMU dev made a post saying, don't do this. Yoast came out and was like, don't do this. Everyone out there is like, don't do this. Regardless, they decided to do it anyways. Now, remember, WordPress is an open source platform. However, I still strongly believe that this is their product. And know how to, notice how I said product, okay? So this is their product. We were on their platform. So in regards, they make the rules. And I totally agree with them because if I had a platform and I was making stuff on it, it's my product, it's my platform. Sure, you can build on it, but in the end, it's my platform and whatever I decide to do with it, uh, that's my choice, right? So I don't have any any re any resent there. I don't have any, I mean, that's logic stuff. Like that's just basic thinking. You're on their platform. They do what they want and you have to buy by their rules. That's fine. Now, what I kind of don't, don't like about what I heard in the state of the word is how he said, Matt Mullenweg, there's a question here by this guy right here. And uh, basically the question is, you know, how did you decide about Gutenberg? And, and he always says, we, and... The, the, the person was basically saying when Matt Mullenweg says we, are they referring to the community? Are they referring to themselves, the team? Are they referring to one person? Who is we? So we is an interpretation that we kind of have to interpret. And it turns out we was just him and his lead developers. That's who we was. So my my general concept, like my opinion about all of this is saying, I don't think we should be I don't think he and his team of three or four developers should make these kind of decisions for over 75 million websites. We is not enough. Now, as a biz if someone owned a business, if I own WordPress.org, I'm gonna be saying, look guys, there's, there's me and there's four of us. Um, I don't think we should be making the decisions, just four of us, for over 75 million people. You know, In fact, uh, a lot of companies out there hire shareholders and they decide who we is, you know? They decide who the boss is. So for example, uh, Google, you know, uh, Amazon, you know, or not Amazon, I think, yeah, Amazon. All those companies are owned by shareholders and shareholders decide who's the boss and what should happen. So they elect someone and that person makes decisions. If they don't like the decisions, they vote them out, they kick them out. And that happened to Disney, that happened to a lot of other companies, that happened to AT&T where they kick out the CEOs. And that happens all the time because maybe those people who make those decisions are not in the best interest of the people. So, you know, I did watch the state of the word and, um, you know, I do believe that we needed Gutenberg anyways, because honestly, let's, let's just take a quick look at the standard editor and, you know, Matt Mullenweg, he made a very good point when he talked about the actual editor in the beginning of the video, where he says, look at this right here. I mean, this right here, it's just not an adequate page builder. It's really not. And I totally agree with Matt Mullenweg right there. Gutenberg was a good idea. I know a lot of you out there don't like it and hate it, but, you know, we have to look at the new people on WordPress. So if I brought someone who is new to WordPress and showed them this screen, they might be a little confused here. They might not know what to do. But seeing Gutenberg, they're a little bit more, it's a little bit more structured and the block system is perfect. Now, what I totally disagree with is how they handled it. I mean, him and four people said, uh, you know, of course they have their PR talk of saying everyone can talk and blah, blah, blah. That means nothing. That means you can't talk because they're saying we're doing this anyways, no matter what you say. And everyone out there said, don't do this, but they did it anyways. So that does kind of worry me because maybe tomorrow they'll release another update and say, we're going to do this now. And now we're kind of saying, well, we don't want this. And they're saying, well, we don't care. This is our product in the end of the day. And I agree with them. This is their product. Although I don't think they should make decisions for 
75 million people, probably more than that, you know, probably 80 or 90 million people out there because these work in teams, you know, so maybe 75 million times two or three. I think they should have more of an open dialogue with the community instead of making these decisions on saying, you know, this is, you know, Gutenberg. Now, um, one other thing I want to talk about. So when they do talk about my product, Matt Mullenwood said my product, our product, WordPress. Yes, that is fine. We understand WordPress is their product. What I don't like is sometimes how they don't act like it's their product. Like, so for example, they talk about, you know, Matt Mullenweg talked about a split licensing. Now, this is very, uh, a lot of people don't like to talk about this because it's very, you know, it's a legal issue and stuff like that, but this stuff needs to be enforced. So for example, you know, there is no such thing as a split license, yet why does Envato allow split licenses and why does WordPress do nothing about it? Now, in fact, if you go to, if you go to wordpress.org and you see a lot of their statements, a lot of developers don't even listen to what they're saying anymore. They don't even care what WordPress, WordPress.org says, especially in regards to the licensing effect. You know, the licensing, it's so gray that WordPress needs to step in and saying, look, okay, now these are the rules. There's no more gray field. These are the rules and standards because this is our product, right? <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> but this is our product and they need to make more guidelines and rules. There was another case where an Envato author was threatening people on Envato because they weren't buying the multiple licenses and they were threatening to sue those people. And I actually, my friend was one of those people and I could not believe the email I saw. Now, it, with all due respect, I will not name any names, but there was an, uh, an author from Envato, a theme author that was threatening clients saying, if you don't pay for every domain this is on, we're going to sue you. And I saw that and I said, said to him, uh, don't even respond to that because there's nothing they can do. And we all know that. But WordPress needs to step in and be that person to say, you can and cannot do this because remember, this is their product. Now, also what I'm saying here is that in regards to like the split licensing and all that other stuff, one thing that has driven a lot of people mad, in fact, I even made a post about this, is the fact that plugins and theme developers are hacking WordPress and WordPress is doing nothing about it. Let me show you. So over here we have, um, we'll go over here to... All right, we'll go, we'll go, we'll click on the dashboard. Now, when I click on the dashboard for this, what do I see right here? I see this little notice. I can close this. Okay, cool. I'm going to go and close that. Now, I see this right here, Elementor Pro. I need a license key. I cannot close it. I have a, I now have a permanent advertisement in the back of my website that they have hacked on my back end. And now that's all I see. Now, with all due respect to Elementor, I'm not attacking them in any way because there are no rules to say you can and cannot do this. So WordPress needs to step in and say, look, uh, guys, we understand you want to protect your work. We understand that you, you know, that uh, you have a great product, but you can't do that. You know, the simple, that's all it takes is that one thing to say, you can't do this because now I have a permanent advertisement on my back end and my back end's hacked by this ad. Now Elementor is a great product and I think that they should protect their products, but there should be other ways to do it. Not where I have unclickable, I can't close this thing. And remember, I'm not attacking Elementor in here because there's no rules for this. And also, a lot of other developers are doing this. Tons of other companies are doing this. And this one, this next one is really deceitful too. Let me let me go ahead and show you this one right here. So over here, installed plugins, we have uh, WP Mail SMBT. And this has over, I think, 1 million active installs. It's a very popular plugin created by WP Forms. Now, what happens when you install this plugin? Well, if I install the plugin right now, uh, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on appearance. I'm gonna go to plugins. But what, what what's this new tab right here? Recommended. What's this? What's this right here? Recommended. Now it's saying install recommended plugins. So now they've hacked my dashboard where forever it's gonna say recommended. They're gonna permanently be advertising all their stuff on my back end. Now remember these plugins were supposed to follow a policy in order to get there. So are they doing their job at WordPress.org? Why are why are plugins like this being introduced where it's hacking my back end and I have a permanent advertisement on my back end? Now, I don't think the the you know WordPress doesn't care about their products. And I don't I and I don't think Gutenberg was some sort of way to, to attack WordPress and to destroy it. I mean, Matt Mullenweg has created something really amazing, but it's just how they handled it is not the correct way. It's truly not, because when you have an audience that big you need to sort of get more opinions than just your lead developers. I mean, they they can't make decisions for that many people. It's too big. I mean, it's it's too big. 
for four people to make a decision on that many websites that controls one third of the internet is simply irresponsible. It's just irresponsible. But I do agree that we needed Gutenberg. I just think the way they handled it was not correct. So that's my two cents about it. Um, you know, the split licensing, again, I, I don't like posts like these because, you know, he's complaining about it in a sense, but he's not doing anything in a sense because, you know, it's like, oh, this is not allowed. This is not allowed. Oh, it's a gray field. Then start making some, some rules and guidelines because this is your product. So you kind of carry some sort of liability in a sense, you know? So when it's your product, you kind of have to stand up just like they forced WordPress or Gutenberg in WordPress, they need to force the rules on developers and theme companies to protect the audience and also to protect developers. You know, I'm not some anti-developer person, you know, I, I promote them for a living. This is what I do, but I've seen how developers can get really aggressive because there's no guidelines, there's no principles. And now you have a lot of companies making non-GPL products for WordPress, which I don't mind. I think that's, um, I don't mind it at all. I really don't because they want to, they, they got to get paid. They have to get paid and that's perfectly fine with me. So let me know what you think about what I said in this conversation. Let me know what you were, if you're having a problem with the page builders, also about the state of the word. Um, you know, again, I do appreciate the Gutenberg. I do appreciate that we needed it. I really just don't think that him and his lead of developers should be making decisions for over 75 million plus websites. That could be way more than that in numbers because remember they control more than one third of the internet. So I think there needs to be a new sort of approach on management on how to fix these things not on a Discord channel with you with with three or four leads. I mean, they can't do that. That's it's irresponsible for them to do that. It's really irresponsible. They need to either now. I'm not saying to monetize it by creating a, a, a public company by you know having shareholders, but what I am saying is have a different way of managing this because it's it's just too many people for 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 a few people to make that decision. You know, it's just it's too many. So again, let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought about the wordpress.org. You know, are developers really following the rules for wordpress.org? Are they hacking the back end? Are they adding a lot of advertisements that are bothering you? Um, WP forums, you know, again, this is not an attack on developers. It's attack more on wordpress.org for not creating the guidelines for them. And I don't blame anybody here. I don't blame wordpress.org because, you know, they didn't make the rules and then you have developers that don't break the rules, but kind of manipulate it and they kind of start to get in the cracks and they get really technical because that's where we're at right now. So again, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about WordPress 5.0. Give Gutenberg a chance, you know, really truly do because this right here, I, I do agree. I love this screen. I, I, I really <laughs> truly love it. But when we see stuff like this, it is a better editing experience than this right here. It, it really is, you know, and and uh, we did need Gutenberg because this right here is just, it's a really bad example of uh, an editing and um, the, the video that he introduced in the beginning where he talked about the, the girl or, uh, yeah, the girl trying to change stuff, I totally agree with that and I totally agree with Gutenberg. So let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. I'll see you all later.